Okay, guys, we're going to look at the guillotine choke. First one against a body lock. Okay, second variation, more of a grappling scenario. Third, from close guard. That was kind of fast. This one is kind of nasty on your friend's neck, so we'll go, go through a little bit slow now and look at what we're doing. This is one of the most basic submissions. It's, it's seen not only in jiu-jitsu, but in a lot of different styles of grappling and martial arts, the guillotine choke, okay? So the first one we looked at, you find yourself on the receiving end of this clinch position or body lock position, which as we know from the takedown lessons is not the best spot for you to be. So I'm gonna look at how to break down this hold right here. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna create pressure on his elbows by going just above the elbows at the tricep tendon, and I lock my hands together. What I'm gonna do is straighten my arms out as I move my hips back. It's gonna create some pressure on his grip, and he's gonna need to release. So it looks like this. Once his grip breaks, let's look at it from this side. Once his grip breaks, I'm gonna now transfer my hands to his neck, okay? So what I'm gonna do is bring my forearm on his collarbone and my hand on the back of his neck. My opposite hand, comes in from the opposite side, okay? So basically now I've got two barriers here on his collarbones. It makes it more, much more difficult for him to reestablish that hold. Now what I want to do is take advantage of having control of his head. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to step back with one leg. Whichever leg that is in the back side is the direction that his head will end up on. So if you notice here, my right leg is back. I pull his head underneath my armpit and I go with my arm around his neck. I make a fist, grab my own wrist, now what I'm going to do is square myself up with my back foot so I've got a good base. I cinch my arms up, expand my chest, and lean my weight back. Okay? So my grip is here. Fist, fist, cinch it up, expand the chest, lean the weight back. One more time. Body lock. Break the grip. Forearm on the collarbone. Forearm on the collarbone. Step back with one leg pull his head into the hole, grip, make a fist, grab your own wrist, square yourself up, cinch it up, expand your chest, lean back, guillotine. That's more, uh, if he's got you in a body lock, this could be like a practical self-defense application. Another one we'll do is more of a sportive application where we're, we're not uh, necessarily looking for punches and kicks, but takedowns, points, looking to gain advantage positions on each other. So the collar and elbow tie, is uh, where we're going to look at. What that means is I've got one hand on the collarbone and one hand on his elbow here. From this position, I've got a little bit more control of Chris and he has over me. So instead of us each locking up on each other's head and getting into this neutral position where we're, you know, not very effective, we're going collar and elbow here. Or you can even go collar and wrist. At any rate, the hand that I've got, you can try to grab me a little bit, Chris. I try to do, do something with your hand. Right, right. So I make a hook here on his elbow and I'm blocking here from him grabbing me. So what I do here is I step back just like I did before and pull his head forward. As I pull his head forward, the hand is on his elbow, transfers to the neck. Notice this hand is still in position until I get my arm set around his head. Why? Because I don't want him to come in and grab me with this, this arm here. So this is going to create a little bit of a barrier here. Let's look at that setup again. Collar and elbow, step back, pull his head in and grip. Once I got my arm around his neck, I go ahead and change my grip. Same squeeze. I'm going to lift up, expand my chest, and lean back. Okay? Let's look at it from the ground now. So let's say I was taken down. We always know that we want to keep the guy real close, head control. Now we've looked at a few different things that happen here. One of the most common things from this position is he'll try to create space with his arms and try to get distance to strike or even slam. So if I feel himself pulling away, what I'm going to do is I'll cross my legs, put my hand on the ground, and I'm going to release his neck and go for his shoulder here. Can we turn a little bit to the side? Yes. Look at this from a couple different angles. So once I'm here, I'm going to release, hug his shoulder. I'm going to drop this leg flat to the mat. And I'm going to elevate my hip by pushing with my right foot here. Okay. My intention here would be to knock him over. Just, we're going to do the sweep, okay? All the way to the mount position. It's very common, however, since he fought hard to get to the top position, he doesn't want to fall over. He'll stop it by putting his hand on the mat right here. Okay, so now I'm kind of stuck, but what I can do is change my attack. So what I'm going to do is forget about hugging the shoulder and I'm going to get the guillotine. How am I going to do that? This arm is going to go around his neck. 
I'm not trying to get my grip just yet. I just want to keep his head kind of down with a little bit of pressure, like so. Now I'm going to start scooting myself towards his wrist. So see how my bottom scooting towards his wrist here? I touch my chin against the top of his shoulder, and this arm, which was over his shoulder originally, hugs his neck. Now my free hand can go either over his shoulder or in front of his shoulder. Either way is going to be fine, okay? When I make my grip, what I'm going to do is grab, I'm going <clears> to <throat> layer my elbows and fall to the side. One very important thing here is that when I'm doing it and I fall down, his body weight is no longer directly on top of me, but I have an angle on him. In other words, I don't want to fall with his weight crushing my body like this. It's very heavy on me now. What I want to do is make him feel my weight. So as I scoot my hip away and I start to fall, notice how I'm to the side. Okay, now, when I do it, one indicator that you've got the technique correct is to look for this space right here on the back of his neck. If you can see this, you're probably not doing the hold correctly. What you want to do is flare your elbows, which is going to cause your shoulder to get to, get to the space, make it hard for him to pull his head free. Okay, so I'm here. Notice how it's very difficult to see the back of his head here, okay? And now all I do is make a little pressure. He taps quick, all right? So, one more time. The whole thing. I got his head controlled. He's pushing away. Hand on the ground. Knee down, bump. I put my hand on the ground right next to his hand. I start scooting my hips to the side, okay? Like I said, I can go over his arm or in front. Preference thing. I like to put my chin right here on the top of his back, also to make it hard for him to pull away. Once I get the hole, I just lean to my side, flare my elbows, and make pressure. And he's going to go very quickly. And that, my friends, is the guillotine choke.